It's now my uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, Thomas uh, Fröhlich from uh, Heidelberg uh, to give his presentation uh, about, let's probably uh, best summarized as a linguistic aspect of complexity. Uh, Thomas, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, I do not really understand what I myself gave as a title, Pivotal Features of Mutually Adaptive and Contextually Sensitive Convergence, etc. We are a group of uh, psychosomatic and uh, mathematicians and philosophers, etc., based in Heidelberg, and we try to understand what uh, person-centeredness might mean, what it means to be at the center of something. And this allows to give the opposite view compared to the view on systems. The view on systems usually goes from outside and then you connect, uh, see connections, and regularities. And our view comes from the inside and uh, <clears throat> creates a horizon uh, a, light, a kind of a space, a semant semantic space, how we call it. And we try to define the functioning of such semantic spaces. To give an example, our meeting here, this conference creates a space, a space in, uh, that we share, uh, to that we contribute. And uh, it's quite obvious that this space is not a metric space uh, measured in meters or kilometers. We are quite a lot of kilometers far away from each other, uh, but it's another type of measuring if you want to measure it at all. It would be a semantic difference or distance. So, we try to find out the structure, also to say geometry or topology of such semantic spaces and seeing them as dynamic and interactive, we try to understand how they interact. Because interaction of us as individuals is not simply additive, we just do not sit statically fixed beneath each other. Instead, we listen to each other, someone talks, and we try to understand and implement what another person says. So the interaction of two semantic spaces, as we might call it, uh, is one of implementation and processing and digesting content and not a simply additive one. So based on this concept of semantic spaces, we developed a concept of the semantic body, which we think should be as uh, introduced as a concept added to the well-known metric body in, uh, em embedded in a metric world uh, with different kinds of measurements including admittedly statistics. Okay, based on this theory, we uh, went further and tried to develop a model how to implement it in care and healthcare institutions. And we will start groups uh, in kind of a grassroots um, uh, endeavor uh, to meet and to train person-centeredness in an empathic way. Uh, empathic way means not being completely overwhelmed by the other and not being totally detached, but instead in a trained balance and this is what we will we what we uh, will achieve by using as if techniques such as 
improvisational theater, improv theater. We will not start a psycho bubble group. <laughs> um, instead, we will make jokes and we will play and we will train awareness of bodily processes and emotional processes just by playing and uh, spiraling around these topics and issues. Um, the theory I talked about uh, has been published in a long series of papers, mostly in the European uh, Personal Society uh, as, uh, Journal of European Person Centered Healthcare and uh, others. And uh, also the, com uh, the, 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 the idea of the groups will be published in uh, this journal. The topic of the geometry and the semantic body com com uh, model uh, will also be published. We just think about it. Most of these uh, papers can be read in ResearchGate.net. We have uh, put them into this. So you might have a look on this if you want and are interested in it. Well, that's it. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Thomas, uh, for the succinct talk and uh, staying nicely in time. Uh, <laughs> let's open it. Let, let's opening it up. Uh, I guess I uh, give Paige the chance to ask the first question uh, because um, uh, she is very much into communication in the in the context of learning. Paige. Hi, yes, and I'm just really interested in maybe I, I need to download the papers you mentioned on how you how you map the interactions when you're looking at the semantic spaces that you are creating. What what maps or what modelings or what techniques do you use? And particularly because I've got a couple of our my doctoral students on here and we're looking at kind of modeling complexity, but the linguistic complexity that happens, and I can think it becomes even more complex if you're creating a semantic space with those who may have different cultural or linguistic backgrounds. So how does all that add to understanding maybe the visuals of the space or the tools you use to understand or map the complexity? That's a lot, yes, I'm sorry. Great, great. no, no, wonderful. Um, in, in semantics, uh, you have these uh, conceptual spaces. Maybe you have heard of that, garden force. Yes. And they, they measure length, so to say, as distances uh, within that. But they use uh, typical metrics and they use mathematics. And unluckily, we are not uh, able to use uh, topology in the real sense of topology because we do have a discrete, in mathematical terms, this create granulated polycentric uh, structure um, with uh, round spaces, spheres, so to say, centered around uh, center. <laughs> and we see them as dynamic, which means it's not a sphere, static, fixed, one center. No, it's a process which spirals, so to say, uh, around a semantic axis. Mm -hmm. And these semantic axes, you and me, we just in this moment are engaged in a conversation and you form one semantic axis with your ideas behind and I form a different semantic axis. And if we are lucky, these semantic axes converge, okay? Mm -hmm. And if they really converge, which means implementation from my side and implementation from your side, successful implementation, then they create another sphere, a shared sphere. So and that's how you know you have intersubjectivity, correct? So in, that's right. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, which is a creative process and depends on several requirements. These uh, semantic axes must converge otherwise, and this convergence in itself depends on attunement, timing, stressing this word or that word, mood, etc., etc. So it's context dependent. You can't see it as two um, separated, isolated, uh, monomeric uh, objects. It's, uh, it's these are processes creating volumes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> well, but I think it's really interesting as perhaps a method to understand coevolution, because no. uh, yeah. and coevolution of thought. And because, you know, sometimes the brain's the black box, but when we come together and we, we talk about like cooperation versus collaboration and the coevolution of ideas is key to collaboration, you know, that's all over communication theory, but studying it and visualizing it in this way of the convergence that you're talking about really could help with understanding and visualizing that coevolutionary process of thought, right? You are right. There is one problem. <laughs> we are we all just more or less to, to use um, serial uh, pictures, mm. process A to B, etc., or relation A to B with a line in between. To think about volumes that contain volumes, which it fits to systems theory, quite obviously, systems with subsystems with subsystems, any system is a volume in our approach. And you have to train your brain in thinking in volumes or spaces instead of lines or points. In 3D. So, in yeah. 3D with volume rather than in two dimension, right? All right. Uh -huh. Not one dimensional as a line or point, not two dimensional as an area, but three dimensional as a volume. Okay. <laughs> and you could add a fourth dimension time. Time. Uh, oh, sorry. Over, yeah. over time. Semantic space, semantic over time. time. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to this energy, semantic energy, okay? <laughs> yes. You let okay, me wonderful. ask the question. Yakum, you, you would let me ask the question, so. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you for your questions. Wonderful. And, and anyone else uh, wanting to ask a question? Um, maybe not a question, but... Uh, uh, Thomas, it's wonderful how you explain this. Mm -hmm. And a colleague and me brought it down to the practical ground. And we wrote a book about, about mastering the medical consultation. And it is about communication with the patient and also organizing the consultation. And we look the doctor and the patient as experts. Mm -hmm. Expert the doctor for the medicine, for the scientific stuff and the patient for his for the context of his illness and his beliefs and everything which makes yeah. uh, a, a certain disease to his very personal illness yeah. and discussing together we share we construct a common reality okay and on yeah. the basis of this common reality uh, then we can uh, go forward and find to a shared decision. Yeah. Bringing Within together. The I, th I think this is uh, the practical way of, uh, of your very yeah. um, colorous yeah. um, explication. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ingrid, you are next. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Very interesting. I Some of the facilitation I do is in aged care services. And we um, often it's when they're transitioning to a new built environment, which is more person-centred, and they call it a household model. 
um, in this particular organisation. So we facilitate learning circles with groups of staff okay. to explore person-centredness. So I was curious, when you talk about training in person-centredness and empathy, can you say something about that or even maybe point to a, some of your research or papers? Yeah, no, um, I, I love to make a point here <laughs> uh, with this immediate reaction. It's quite different than reading papers, isn't it? <laughs> um, so this is what we want to do in the groups also. Um, these are health and care, health care workers uh, or persons uh, going with uh, autistic uh, uh, pupils into the school and people like that and um, they are from different backgrounds and have different education levels so you would not be able to start a kind of balint group balint group you have heard of this this is a uh, doctors only so to say uh, not officially but effectively so we do not uh, focus mainly on talking, but on playing with each other, training, distancing, or coming nearer together. Also, we try to be more aware of bodily and emotional immediate re reactions, because they usually dominate much of what we do in everyday work. And if you, including maybe too much empathy, uh, in the beginning, this, this uh, sadly diseased uh, or died sister has been mentioned with a burnout. And this burnout may come from too much empathy. And so what we train in the group is this correct form of distancing. And at both end in what you're saying, holding the compassion and empathy in a way that doesn't overwhelm you in a way. That's yeah. it. That's, That's it. interesting and very embodied in that facilitation of how you're helping people to, yeah, make sense of a way of interacting that is more person-centered and empathic. Thank you. Um, yeah. and, and mentioning my sister, I think I've read some about, um, it's not necessarily compassion burnout. I think she had some system burnout okay yeah yeah in a way who knows but just one way of making sense of it but yes thank you very interesting yeah. i'll read yeah. more thank you thomas thank you. <laughs> ingrid i think the comment i would make is uh, that the, uh, the distinction between the bodily and uh, the uh, emotion mental um, uh, uh, semiotic uh, or sense making domains are all interacting uh, I'm not sure I haven't mentioned it, but I've created the SPSS um, uh, model, somatopsychosocial semiotic model of health, uh, which is really an, ex an uh, for me an, a necessary extension of uh, the biopsychosocial model. Uh, if things don't make sense, uh, it affects you in all of your other domains. Yes. And um, uh, medicine or, or healthcare at large is ignoring uh, the sense making um, uh, uh, issue. It makes perfect sense uh, in my uh, aged care work uh, that a 92 year old says, I don't want antibiotics for my cough or my pneumonia. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is completely and utterly. Uh, 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 non-understandable to people uh, who are just simply trained being respiratory physicians and uh, if you have uh, fine crabs and an x-ray uh, that says it's pneumonia you get IV antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do a disservice to it and we come back to the person-centeredness. Uh, yeah, problem uh, to be fixed or shared sense making I guess in a way, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, uh, in, in the end, I think what I see out of all of our talks is that there is, is a convergence um, uh, to, to the system as a whole, which is really sadly lacking.